Well, we are fresh off of our third hottest summer on record and likely across much of Colorado as well. Once those official numbers come in in the next couple of days and the heat only looks to continue. And for more on this and how September in particular has trended much hotter of late and also much drier, generally speaking of late in the state of Colorado, we're now joined by 90s meteorologist Corey Reppenhagen here on 90s Plus. Uh, Corey, first of all, before we kind of get into September and some of those recent trends we've noted in recent years, we're coming off of an exceptionally hot August, aren't we? It was. I mean, it, you, that first week, it really shows how just unusual that first 14 days of August was because uh, the second half wasn't too horrible, right? And we even had some below average days, but uh it was just a, a a monster first 14 days i mean we broke uh six heat records in the month of august alone three of those were morning low temperatures so i mean it was uh it was a very hot august um but september is just uh you know uh one of those months that i always look forward to because i love change because i don't know if i uh, if, if it's an attention deficit, but I just get bored, especially summer. I mean, summer is my least favorite season. It's 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 pretty boring around here, but things to start to get a little bit spicier on uh, normally in September. And um, despite the changes, I think we'll always have those, uh, you know, despite the uh, change in September's climatology, we'll still have those uh, interesting days, I think. Well, with that said, it, Denver used to average, um, used to get snow on a fairly consistent basis along, not only just Denver, but along the front range. But in the last 20 plus years, you've only had one measurable snowfall in Denver. That was back in 2020, that crazy spell when we went from 101 degrees down to measurable snow in the span of about, what, I think 48 hours. Um, that was obviously a once in a lifetime kind of event. But uh, the point is, is Corey, we really have noted some changes climatologically in the month of September in particular, haven't we? Yeah, it's the one month if, you know, for especially for people that have lived here, you know, a, a good 10, 20 years, you can really kind of feel that September is that month where things really seem different. Uh, you know, when you when you move to Denver and you look at the snow climatology and you see that there's actually an average of an inch of snow in September and you hadn't you haven't seen any snow, how, how is that? Um, it, it's because we used to get, uh, you know, a good two or three inch snowstorm every couple of years. And the snow is is definitely something you'll notice that is a big change. Uh, and then the, the heat, I think, is another thing that has changed quite a bit. And it's probably related to that, to that lack of snow. Um, if you look at the, so it, we, we climatologists like to break down uh, climatology into 30 year blocks to kind of, that's what they've decided to do to kind of track climate change. And last year we moved, uh, we advanced forward in that 30 years. And basically what we did was we took 1981 to 1990 and cut that out of the record. And then we added 2011 to 2020. So you have this new block of information that kind of shows you what has really happened over the last, uh, you know, that last 30 years. And what we see is that September has increased its warming more than any month uh, out of all the months. And perhaps why would that be? Why would September, would we feel the impacts? Because, I mean, to your point, September here in Colorado is essentially turned into an extension of summer. Um, why why September? Maybe May not as much, for example. Uh, why are we feeling it this time of year? Any thoughts on that? Yeah, it's interesting because when uh, we first started really getting good climate modeling uh, to try to figure out how, you know, where's climate change going to actually lead us? Uh, is it going to, how, how is it going to change? Uh, one of the things it immediately told us was the extension of summer and it would be on both ends, right? It would be uh, it, it pushing into early fall and spring would would uh, come a little, would end a little earlier as well. And so we haven't really seen spring changes that much. It has been all kind of in the uh, September, August, September and October region. 
And so it, it could, it, there's so many things that could be happening here, but the, the basis of that climatology, that climate modeling, that climate scientists would, are telling us about how the global warming is going to uh, change our climate. And that one of those reasons, one of those things is the extension of summer, summer um, becoming a, a little bit longer. And we're seeing that in, in, the, in playing out in the first month of fall, September. And there's so many connections. I mean, it could, it could even go back to, um, and this is also related to, to climate change, but what's interesting is September is the month that we expect to see that first, um, you know, vanishing of the, of the polar sea ice. And so um, September it has been had the biggest change in polar sea ice. And so we're watching September to see when is that when is that first September going to come where we don't have any any sea ice in the polar caps. And so that that system is all interrelated, and it's one change here uh, with the sea ice changes everything down in the line. And that could, I mean, it's it's hard to say just one little spot like the front range of Colorado is all that really playing into our hands here, but most likely there is a connection there between what's happening with climate change and uh, September's in Colorado. That's interesting. There's still so much we to what you just said there uh, that we don't know where there's a domino effect from climate change and that leads to unintended or maybe uh, impacts that you might not foresee quite as well as what we're as what we're talking about so it's not just directly things are warming across the globe that means that temperatures in Colorado will warm and uniform it leads to these offshoot effects like you mentioned the polar sea ice melting and that can in some cases you know we've been talking about the jet stream there's been a theory out there that the jet stream is strengthened by the clash of temperatures and that can maybe lead to stronger spring storms for example as well yeah exactly and i think it is all connected and and it also what's interesting is it, it connects to the what you and i talk about a lot chris is those oceanic oscillations that impact the weather especially winter weather and fall weather for for that as well but one, one thought that has always kind of existed is that um, the El Nino Southern, Southern Oscillation, the ENSO, which we're in a, we're in a cold phase, La Nina now, um, where the thought is that the climate change impacts the, pol the, the polar regions first, and then the mid-latitudes, and then the equator, not so much, but we've seen so many La Nina events over the last 20 years, and we have seen now an almost unprecedented triple La Nina coming up here, and that's going to be super interesting. Uh, I'm a little worried about what that can actually mean for September through even the end of uh, winter into March 1st. I guess it's a good way to close out. What are, what are you saying? What are you feeling about this upcoming fall, early winter season? Well, whether it's uh, the climatology of the change in uh, September, and it's not just September. Uh, so September has, the, has had the biggest change. It's warmed 1.5 degrees over the last 30 years. But October, November, December, and January have all also experienced warming. So you have the climatology background there that uh, calls for warming. And then if you look at the precipitation side, out of all of the fall months and winter months, only October has had an increase in precipitation and it's very, very mild. So we're heading into what we already know is climatology warmer and drier. And then you add the triple La Nina into that mix, which really favors high pressure. So sinking air over the Western United States and when you have that, it very much limited, limits your storm opportunities because the jet stream just doesn't have an opportunity to sway around so much. It, it kind of gets pinned a little bit to the, to the north of Colorado. So um, I, I really feel like we could be looking at uh, a, a, at least a carbon copy of last year. Well, hopefully not. 
Hopefully not. Uh, of course, those would be the conditions of what if the Marshall fire back on December the 30th. But with that said, uh, Corey, Rep, uh, Corey Rep and Hank, thanks so much for joining us here on Now News Plus and giving us some insight about why, again, September's have trended warmer in recent years and perhaps how that might play into our upcoming fall and early winter outlook. Thanks so much, Corey. Thank you, Chris. We'll talk to you later. Talk to you later. Thanks, Corey.